Imagine having the ability to live forever, travel anywhere you want in the universe, and harness enough power to create wormholes. Well, if you were part of the exclusive Type 3 civilization, these were just everyday experiences. Picture this scenario. Humanity had ascended to unprecedented heights. Over centuries of relentless innovation and unity, they had evolved into a Type 3 civilization, a pinnacle of scientific and technological achievement. One of their most astonishing feats was the mastery of immortality. Through advanced biotechnology and genetics, they had unlocked the secrets to eternal life. No longer bound by the constraints of mortality, their control over the cosmos was equally impressive. Immense Dyson spheres encircled multiple stars, capturing their energy to power their society. With this energy, they created wormholes, seamlessly bending space and time to explore the universe at will. Every day brought new horizons to explore. Humanity ventured to planets brimming with life, encountered civilizations with wholly unique paths of evolution, and exchanged knowledge that transcended species boundaries. Even with all their greatness, they stayed true to their values. They cared for others, worked together, and treated all life with respect. They used their immense power to help civilizations that were not as advanced as they were. All of this sounds like science fiction. I mean, how can regular Earth people like us hope to gain such incredible power? Should we even try? What would our lives be like if we became a Type 3 civilization? Would all this advanced tech be good or bad for us? And if we dare to dream even bigger, what would it take for us to become a Type 4 civilization? Well, let's find out. On the Kardashev scale, which measures how advanced a civilization is in using energy, we're currently at Type 0. To reach Type 1, we'd need to make full use of all the energy sources on Earth, like sunlight. Physicist Michio Kaku believes we might achieve this in a century or two. Getting to Type 2, where we harness the energy of our sun, is a much longer journey, possibly taking a few thousand years. To reach Type 3, where a civilization uses the energy of an entire galaxy, it could take anywhere from 100,000 to 1 million years. So, if we could fast forward 1 million years, what might life look like? With nearly limitless energy at our disposal from any planet or star we see, we could live anywhere we like. We could even create new planets or solar systems. Earth and other planets in our solar system might be depleted of resources, as we'd use them to build energy-collecting satellites called Dyson Swarms. These swarms would gather energy from stars, essentially turning them into giant batteries. But to truly become a Type 3 civilization, we'd need vast numbers of Dyson Swarms, collecting energy from all the stars in our galaxy. By then, we'd have advanced biotechnology, and many of us might be cyborgs, seamlessly blending human and machine. Our technological evolution could lead to remarkable achievements, like controlling artificial limbs with our thoughts, or even merging with AI. This transformation might be necessary for warp speed travel, making our bodies more resilient. As a Type 3 civilization with abundant resources, we'd have the power to tap into Planck energy, the energy of space-time itself. At this level of physics, things would be very different from what we know now. According to special relativity, traveling faster than light locally is impossible. However, general relativity offers potential ways to achieve faster than light travel. One possibility involves using wormholes or multiply-connected Riemann surfaces. To create a wormhole, one approach is to assemble a spinning ring with stellar amounts of energy, preventing it from collapsing. Traveling through such a wormhole could take you to a distant part of the universe. Another method is to extract a wormhole from the quantum foam, the fabric of space and time at a very tiny scale. However, wormholes come with several challenges. Some versions require massive amounts of positive energy, like a black hole, and have event horizons, making them one-way trips. Others may be unstable or require vast quantities of negative energy or matter, which we currently lack the technology to produce. Another possibility for faster-than-light travel is to continuously stretch space and time using enormous amounts of energy. By contracting space in front of you and expanding it behind you, you could exceed the speed of light. But again, the energy requirements are immense and achievable only by a Type of 3 civilization. There's also the question of whether general relativity allows for topology change, which would enable time machines or closed time-like curves. This issue arises in extreme energy domains, where quantum effects take over from classical gravitational effects. 
A unified field theory of quantum gravity, like superstring theory or M-theory, is needed to address these questions. Superstring theory is a promising candidate for a theory of everything, but it's not yet developed enough to answer these fundamental questions about wormholes and their stability. Many physicists believe that, in the coming years, the theory will mature enough to provide answers. However, these are complex problems, and solving the superstring equations remains a significant challenge for even the brightest minds on Earth. Traveling faster than the speed of light would lead to several consequences on the human body, like severe time dilation, relativistic mass increase, and potential tissue damage due to cosmic radiation exposure. Which is why we'll need to upgrade our biological systems and explore possibilities like achieving immortality through advanced biotechnology and genetics to adapt to the rigors of interstellar travel and becoming a Type 3 civilization. Achieving immortality could be one of the greatest challenges humanity faces. However, some scientists have proposed ways in which we can achieve this feat, such as harnessing the power of advanced biotechnology and genetics to slow down or even reverse the aging process. This might involve manipulating our DNA, repairing cellular damage, and enhancing our body's ability to regenerate and repair tissues. Another possibility is cryonics, a process where individuals are preserved at extremely low temperatures after death in the hope that future technologies can revive them and cure the ailments that led to their demise. Furthermore, some futurists speculate that we could exist in android bodies or upload our consciousness to the cloud, allowing us to transcend the limitations of our biological forms and achieve a form of digital immortality. All these possibilities for the future of humanity may seem like a stretch, and we may or may not eventually attain such advancements. But what if there are other advanced civilizations out there, perhaps even more advanced than we can imagine? Could some of these civilizations already possess the kind of power we've discussed? If they do, where might they be located in the vast universe? And what danger is there in actively searching for intelligent aliens? One of the biggest questions we have is where, exactly, do we even fit in this universe? After about 13.8 billion years of cosmic evolution, 4.5 billion years since the formation of Earth, and at least 4 billion years since life first arose on our planet, human beings have done it. We have become an intelligent, thinking, and technologically advanced civilization here on Earth. We can now receive signals from far-off places in the universe, figure out where they come from, to an extent, and learn more about them. We've even begun exploring outer space beyond the confines of our own planetary home. While we've been searching for signs of other intelligent life for over 50 years, a quest known as the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, SETI, we haven't found solid evidence yet. At the same time, some people suggest that we should actively announce our presence to the cosmos, hoping to attract the attention of other advanced civilizations out there. However, not everyone agrees with this idea, as it might have risks. So, what should we think about all of this? And more importantly, what actions should we take? We have both hopes and concerns about making contact with aliens. While we can't predict the exact details, there are four main ways this first encounter could happen. It's either we find indirect signs of life on an exoplanet or exomoon around a foreign star. Through either direct imaging or transit spectroscopy, we'll identify the signatures of a living planet and conclude that the most likely explanation is that it's inhabited. Or, we receive and decode a techno-signature from an advanced extraterrestrial civilization, whether it arrives in the radio band, another electromagnetic frequency, or via some signal we've yet to decode, from energetic neutrinos. Or maybe, we'll receive a direct visitation from aliens. This is the hope of those investigating unidentified flying objects. That somewhere, lying in the gaps of what's been identified and what's been seen, but not at sufficient resolution to uncover, a spacecraft of intelligent alien origin is waiting to be found. Or perhaps there are aliens out there, waiting to be contacted, but that haven't actively been broadcasting. They're awaiting their first message from an alien civilization, and so it's up to us to send it, so that they can receive it. The aspiration here is that there's a possibility of another intelligent civilization within the Milky Way galaxy. They may be like us, or way more advanced than us, and they've already started exploring their local region, driven by curiosity to discover what lies beyond. As far as what's known, we've come much farther than most of us could have imagined even a few decades ago. At the start of the 1990s, 
we only had speculative evidence that planets beyond our own solar system existed. We didn't know how common Earth-sized worlds around Sun-like stars were. We didn't know what types of planets were common or rare in the universe. We didn't know whether our solar system was typical, uncommon, or a cosmic rarity. Our own galaxy has somewhere around 400 billion stars, and we're just one of about 2 trillion galaxies within the observable universe. Of the stars within our galaxy, 80 to 100% of them have planets and planetary systems around them. 20% of those stars are sun-like, of either the K, G, or F subtype. 10 to 20% of those planets are Earth-like in terms of size and mass. And 20 to 25% of those systems have a planet in what we call the habitable zone around them, which means they'd have the right temperatures for liquid water on their surfaces if they had Earth-like atmospheres. When we consider all this information, it seems there could be billions of planets in our galaxy with the right conditions for life. This opens up numerous possibilities, but there are still significant unknowns, especially when it comes to answering these three important questions. How many of these potentially habitable worlds actually hosted or currently host life? Among the worlds with life, how many sustained it over billions of years, allowing it to evolve into complex multicellular forms? And out of those worlds with complex life, on how many did intelligence and advanced technology emerge? Experts like Michio Kaku and Douglas Vakoch agree that assuming we're the only intelligent life in the galaxy is overly simplistic, as these questions remain unanswered. We have billions of possibly inhabited worlds in our Milky Way, as inferred from what we're capable of measuring so far. But we have to be honest about our ignorance. If the answer to all three of these questions is something like 1%, then intelligent life has arisen within our galaxy thousands of times in the past. If the answer to all three of these questions is more like 0.01% or less, then we might be the first to make it this far in the entire galaxy. In simple terms, we currently lack enough information about the universe to provide a definite answer. But if any of these three steps, the emergence of life, its long-term survival, or the development of intelligence, are very unlikely, it's possible that humanity is the only intelligent life out there. Now let's consider a scenario where there are other intelligent civilizations out there. Should we try to communicate with them? According to Michio Kaku, the answer is no, and here's a simplified version of his argument. Reaching out and letting them know we exist could be a disastrous idea. It might be the biggest mistake in human history to intentionally make contact with beings we know nothing about. Such an encounter could potentially lead to the collapse of our civilization. It's not wise to assume that aliens are peaceful and willing to share their technology. Now let's consider a scenario where aliens have bad intentions, seeking conquest and riches. But here's the issue with this argument. If an alien civilization has the capability to travel between stars, they would have mastered advanced technology. In that case, there's no resource on Earth that would be of great value to them because everything we have here can be found or created elsewhere. In essence, we'd have to assume that an advanced extraterrestrial civilization would only be interested in us because we announced our presence, and they would take hostile actions against us without any clear reason, much like how a child might harm ants for amusement. On the contrary, other scientists have presented different perspective, suggesting that staying hidden, like cosmic lurkers, might be the only certain method to keep ourselves isolated on our planet, instead of engaging in any potential cross-civilization interactions. Some might ask, why reach out if they're already aware of our existence? We're essentially testing what's known as the zoo hypothesis. Some other scientists are not convinced by this argument either. If an alien civilization has been observing Earth, they would have noticed significant changes in the past few centuries. Our rapid alterations to the atmosphere, increased CO2 levels, the presence of human-made chemicals, artificial lighting on the night side, and our radio signals all signal the existence of an intelligent and technologically advancing species. Of course, this is a wholly speculative thought exercise, driven largely by our own imaginations and our knowledge solely of past events that have occurred here on Earth. Yet, regardless of whether intelligent aliens exist, regardless of their malevolent or benevolent intents, one fact remains undeniable. For all the problems we have on planet Earth, some self-created, some from external pressures, there is no evidence that anyone else is coming to save us.
No one is coming to solve our energy problems, our resource management problems, our unsustainable treatment of the environment, or problems like war, hunger, nutrient deficiencies, or water insecurity. No one is going to help us value the lives of one another, or even our own lives. If we hope to be saved from the problems facing us today, we have to look inward, to ourselves, and outward. Not to the stars, but to one another. In all the world, the greatest resource we have is the cumulative knowledge we've gleaned and the ability to work together. The ingredients are there, but it's up to us to put them together and use them for the good of all. If we want to change the trajectory of our species, seeking knowledge and searching for the true answers to our deepest questions is certainly an essential part of the solution. But we mustn't rely on either hopes or fears when it comes to the unknown. Instead, we have to rely on the greatest resource of all, a recognition of our shared humanity. Once we address and resolve the challenges we face on Earth, including our energy, resource, and environmental issues, as well as our social and humanitarian concerns, we can pave the way for the evolution of our civilization. These solutions will provide the foundation for humanity to advance and potentially reach higher levels of civilization, such as Type 3 on the Kardashev scale. Over time, we might deplete the resources in our galaxy. In that case, we'd need to advance to become a Type 4 or 5 civilization to explore and extract energy from the rest of the universe. As a Type 5 civilization, we'd have no limitations on resources, and our focus might primarily be on our own technological progress, possibly neglecting the broader universe. For a Type 6 and 7 civilization, you'll have to watch this video on your screen to find out. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos.